an amazing team that's come together to really build a company that we can hopefully commercialize here in 2024. So what does that even mean, commercialize? We want to be the first company to bring an EV tall aircraft to market. And we're really focused on simplifying that mission to get to market and keeping our eye on a very, very focused price. How big is that market? Well, we've heard lots of different estimates. There's analysts in here ranging from hundreds of billions to, I think Morgan Stanley put out a $9 trillion number. So of course, we always like to show uh, the big ones. And um, I think we all, though, can, we all can agree it's, it's going to be a big market. And so really now it's all about closing that gap from moving this industry from this R&D phase, which it's been in for so long, to the real commercialization phase. We took an approach that was different than I think a lot of the other companies. And that approach really started with a business case and not actually the technology. A lot of the industry started with technology. Let's build a high-flying, fast-flying vehicle. Archer said, no, let's take, a, let's take a step back. What vehicle would actually serve the market best? And where is the, the big part of the tail in this market? And so we took a data-driven approach where we looked at where people are traveling today on the ground and where they're spending an incredible amount of time in a car stuck in traffic. And what we found was there are millions and millions of people on an everyday basis that are willing to spend 60, 90 minutes in a car on a very short 20 mile trip. LA is a fantastic example. We've used it a lot of times. Greater than 5 million people a day spend longer than an hour in a car going 20 miles or less. New York City is another great example. Almost 30 million people a year just go from Manhattan to one of the three airports, Newark, JFK, or LaGuardia. That's a brutal 60, 90 minute trip. So we defined a very clear market that we were going to go after and build a vehicle designed specifically for that market. And that's building a vehicle that can do these back-to-back 20-mile -back trips. So it looks like there's all these companies that are going after this market. And how do we tell the difference between who's advancing and who's not advancing? And you know, I, there's, there's lots of articles that are saying there's hundreds of companies doing this. And so we like to apply a really simple filter to help describe where Archer fits in into this industry. So the, probably the, <laughs> the best filter that knocks out most of the companies is capital. This is a very capital intensive business. It takes a lot of money to get through the certification process. And we don't believe you can do it for less than $500 million, but we think the number is probably closer to a billion dollars. When you take that filter alone, it really reduces the scale down considerably. But there's three other factors we like to put on there. One, looking at companies with a fixed wing. And the reason we do that is in order to compete against the missions that we are going to be flying, meaning 20 mile trips, but with rapid back-to-back -back missions, you need a wing in order to, to remain efficient. If you don't, you'll drain the whole battery and you have to sit on the ground charging all the time. Two is we're focused on, or I guess three, we're focused on the urban air mobility market. So we're not focused on regional. So there's some great companies building regional um, you know, aircraft and that's a different market that we're not considering. And then fourth is piloted aircraft. I think it's imperative that if you want to get to market anytime soon, you're going to have to put a pilot in these vehicles in order to get through the FAA. When you do that filter, it really brings you down to two companies. It's Archer and Joby. And so there are great companies out there that are building, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of other ones that get there. But today, these really simple filters shows you that there's only a handful of companies that are as far along as we are. So what you've heard today has been a lot about building a vehicle that's getting to market, but doing it with the lowest amount of risk. And so we thought we'd really peel back some layers and try to show you this. And so on the battery side, we wanted to really help introduce, I don't know if there's any other company that's introduced the exact cell that they're using and really try to explain the benefits of why we're doing that. Cylindrical cells are a great choice because they offer a really safe route to certify. We've seen these cells being used in cars every day. We've seen these cells being mass manufactured. So we still can meet our mission profile with cylindrical cells, while at the same time minimizing risk and maximizing safety. And so there may be benefits to using a higher power pouch cell, for example, but we can still do our mission 
with a much safer cell. So why would we go to a higher power, riskier cell? We've incorporated that theme all the way across the entire company. That is within every segment of this company, is how do you build the most simple version that could help us get to market quickly while still maintaining the performance necessary to be economically viable? In the end, we came up with a concept that will allow us to bring to market a piloted plus four passenger vehicle, and we talk about that thousand pound payload a lot because it's so hard to achieve. And there's so many choices that can be made, trade-offs that can be made, that puts that payload at risk. So there's a lot of groups out there that are gonna talk about four passengers, but I haven't heard a lot of talk on the actual payload that companies can bring because it's so hard. You have to be far along in your design process to really lock that in. You have to be far along with your uh, suppliers and signing up you know, that, all the different components that are coming to the airplane to be able to say that with confidence. And Archer's gotten there. And so to date, we've signed up nearly two thirds of our suppliers to, across our entire bill of materials. So we have a lot of confidence that we can actually build this vehicle and hit the payload that we're talking about. Um, Dr. Michael Swaykuch talked a lot about focusing on in-house development only on key enabling technologies, this concept of realistic innovation. That's another concept that's really spread widely throughout this company. I get often asked, well, how is this industry going to roll out? How are we going to, we're going to commercialize? What's this world going to look like in 2030 or beyond? I like to break the industry up into three distinct phases. The first phase really is all about getting to market. And so it's basically everything that you've seen up to today until the end of 2024 when we certify. The next go-to-market portion is really this 24 to 28 time frame where we'll start relatively small. There'll be routes point to point in one city, and then multiple routes in one city, and then multiple routes in multiple cities, and we'll start to grow this out. At the same time, you'll see these vehicles be used in other use cases outside of just urban air mobility. I think helicopter replacement is a really attractive go-to-market strategy, and you'll see a lot of that start to take place within this same time period. When you hit the 2028 time frame, you really can start to think about how do we build more than hundreds of vehicles? How do we start thinking about thousands of vehicles? And I don't say that lightly. That's very difficult to scale up these vehicles. We've done a lot of work laying the, the, the foundation, working with Stellantis and helping think through high-scale composites. How do we build lots of composites? How do we even think about laying out the factory so we can scale from hundreds of planes to thousands of planes? We did that from the very beginning. When we hit that 2028 20, frame, we believe the demand will be there, we'll be able to scale up these vehicles, and ultimately bring thousands of vehicles to market. When you step back and think about it, though, there's around 50,000 helicopters today. And so we're telling you we're going to build hundreds, up to thousands, and by the end of the decade, less than 6,000 planes. And so we're not even denting the helicopter market by the end of this decade. So there's just so much room to grow into this industry, and there's so much room for multiple players to get to market. So we have two ways that we're going to monetize the business. The first one is what we call Archer Direct. And this is where we will sell vehicles. So I do think helicopter replacement is a really good use case here. So if you can imagine, you go to Hawaii, you want to do a sightseeing trip, you have two choices. One vehicle is an electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft with zero single points of failure. It's good for the environment. The other one is a helicopter. It's got 200 to 300 single points of failure. We're pretty confident people will choose to go electric. But the other Archer Direct component is really looking at bringing the urban air mobility market to life. And so we partnered with United Airlines. And we announced back in 2021 a purchase agreement where United will be buying um, several planes from us, 200 airplanes, and we started working on really the commercialization of that project. We have gone through a joint eVTOL advisory committee where we work on things like maintenance or route planning or um, any operational planning. Um, we even got far enough along in our technical progress where United felt confident to put down the first uh, pre-delivery payment in the industry of $10 million. And so we've been engaged with other airlines, and we've been having other um, conversations. And I think over time, you'll hear more partnerships that will come along. But United has been there from the very beginning, partnered with us hand in hand, and we're very thankful to have them as a partner. 
The second really leg of our commercialization strategy is the urban air mobility segment. And this is really the Archer um, branded airline where we will take customers, passengers on these 20 mile rapid back-to-back -back trips. We'll start small, we'll start in cities, and we'll start to grow that over time. 